So what I have here, of course, is the ThinkPad X9 14 inch Gen 1. And I reviewed this about a month or so ago. For those that didn't see it, I'll leave a link to my review of this and the other videos I did on this. I even compared it to the Intel version of the Surface Laptop, one of my favorites. But of course, I put these head to head, so I'll leave a link to that video as well. Uh, radical departure maybe from what we've seen in the past from a ThinkPad. You don't get that Eclipse Black, but rather a Thunder Gray, which has held up really well. This thin all metal design, you get this, uh, engine hub or whatever they're calling it on the bottom there to keep this thin they had to put this bar here but of course uh, i think i like the look of it and using this for the past month or so has been great typing on it of course with the keyboard not quite as good as the x1 carbon gen 13 this is 1.35 millimeters of key travel that is 1.5 so 1.35 versus 1.5 so you get the difference there but look at this look how thin and light this is gorgeous display this even has pen support besides having multi-touch pen support this has been great but i got this in to compare and this is the 15 inch version of that and this has been nothing short of spectacular as well now there are some key differences between the two this of course has a 15.3 inch oled display this is a touchscreen display as well but there's no pen support on this one but what i like about this one though this has an 80 watt hour battery versus the 55 watt hour battery on the 14 inch what does that mean it means significantly more battery life on the four on the 15 inch over the 14 inch which wasn't bad considering the high res high end high refresh rate displays that these both have 120 hertz on both of these variable refresh rate i believe it's 30 to 120 in terms of that variability and then of course you can keep it on the 120 for that really smooth fluid experience you experience a little bit less battery life but with the battery life on this has been fantastic we'll show you the numbers in this review this is running intel core ultra 236v or 228v or something like that uh, actually let me double check that this is lunar lake and what does lunar lake bring to the table i will tell you it brings more efficiency grip better battery life this is a core ultra 5 228v but you can go up to a core ultra 7 268v with v pro but i don't need all that so the performance on this has been very good, very similar to what I saw on the 14 inch. Now the 14 inch, I looked at the Core Ultra 7 and the Core Ultra 5. So performance wise, you're not gonna see a huge difference between the two, where you're going to see the big difference, of course, is going to be the battery life. Now, the other thing that you'll have to be aware of, the touchpad here is a haptic touchpad as well. There is an option for a traditional mechanical style touchpad, no additional cost to go with the haptic on this one, but this is from a different company, not Sensil, and this is actually really good. It's very good, in fact, but I like the Sensil haptic touchpad a smidge better. To me, it's a little bit more responsive and a little bit more fine-tuned than this one, although the one on the 15 inch is excellent as well. So you can't go wrong. And I do recommend if you're going to get the 15 inch, get it with the haptic touchpad option. Of course, you have the option to go with the regular one, right? So we're going to find out today why I think this is a great choice, especially for those that want even more battery life than you can get on the 14, but also get more screen real estate. Let's stay tuned. Let's find out why I think this is an excellent choice here for 2025. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is the ThinkPad X915 Gen 1 Aura Edition, brand new for 2025, coming up. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the size of this unit and here's the 14 inch and here you can see the footprint is obviously going to be um, smaller for the 14 inch over the 15 inch if I can get this lined up correctly. So here you can see it and this is um, not much thicker than the 14 inch but it is definitely a bigger footprint. Uh, ports wise, there is one difference between the two and that is going to be the fact that you get a USB-A port on the right side of the 15 inch. You don't get a USB-A port on the 14 inch. Other than that, they both have the four, the two, four, uh, the two Thunderbolt 4 ports, one on each side. They're split up, which I like. So that's been pretty good. No SD card reader on either one of these. But as far as ports, they could be better. It is definitely better on the X1 Carbon Gen 13. 
but you do get that extra port going with the 15 inch again the USB A port that's been pretty good now as far as the internals on this uh, what is upgradable is that M.2 2242 SSD and that of course gives you some pretty good reads and writes certainly fast enough for what you need this laptop to do so and the other thing to keep in mind is you're looking at Wi-Fi 7 here, Bluetooth 5.4, so it is pretty much future-proof as far as either the 14 or the 15-inch, so that's been great in terms of the wireless. Now, as far as any 5G options, I didn't see any, and I don't believe there is an option here for 5G, especially with the ThinkPad. I kind of wish that was an option here, but unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case. Now, performance-wise, the 15-inch is going to perform very similar. Again, they're running the Lunar Lake processor, which brings more efficiency. But again, you're not going to have great multi-core performance here. Uh, pretty good single-core performance. But for everyday tasks, I'd be honest with you, you will not notice a difference in terms of performance. Now, I have the Core Ultra 5 228V. Now, with the 228V, I'm able to get that 32 gigabytes of the integrated memory here. It's the 8533 integrated on the chip here with Lunar Lake. It is very fast, and I like having 32, but that's as far as you're going to be able to max this out. That's a limitation to Lunar Lake, nothing to do with whether Lenovo wanted to add more or not. So... That is the internals, and the only thing you can upgrade as far as the user is potentially the battery and, of course, the, the um, storage here, right? So 2242 is good. I would like to see the full-size 2280, but we don't get that. Of course, uh, I'll take it. This is fine. Now, as far as the camera here, so this has been one of the stars of the show. This is a... Uh, 8 megapixel 4K camera. It has been, it's been pretty spectacular. I'll show you an example in a moment. It is an IR camera. That means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. Now, the camera guts are housed in this reverse notch on the top here. And that's not a problem. I don't have a problem with that notch over here. So again, for those that might not like that, it's, uh, you know, aesthetically may not look as good. I have no problem with it. It also, also gives you an ability to open this with one finger. So the hinges on here, by the way, very good, very minimal screen wobble when typing. So let's look at that camera right now. And you let me know what you think in the comment section below. So what we have here is an eight megapixel IR camera that can shoot 4k video. And this is a really excellent camera, in my opinion. What do you think about the video quality and what do you think about the audio quality? Now, it does have the studio effects. You have the background effects here, standard blur, portrait blur. You can do the auto framing. All that stuff is here. So that is pretty good. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Now, there is a shutter switch. Actually, the F9 key turns off the camera for more security and privacy. And... There is, like I said, an IR, so that means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. Also, the power button doubles as a fingerprint scanner here. It's a little bit recessed, so you don't have any accidental presses. It's next to the delete key, but overall, pretty good. Again, let me know what you think in the comments section below. Now, as far as the keyboard is concerned, uh, 1.35 millimeters of key travel, which is not quite as good as the 1.5 millimeters on the X1 Carbon Gen 13. Uh, haptic touchpad here, by the way, that's good. We'll talk about that in a moment. But as far as the keyboard itself, typing out documents, emails, and the like has been very good. And if you want to hear how it sounds, let's do that right now. Let me show you an example. Now, as far as the touchpad is concerned, you have the option of going with a regular mechanical style touchpad or this haptic touchpad. Now, the difference between the 14 inch and this one is this haptic touchpad, force pad, whatever you want to call it, is not Sensil. It's not done by Sensil. It's done by some other company. That being said, it's still a very good haptic touchpad. You can control the intensity within the settings as far as the haptic feedback, scrolling, doing all your gestures has been very good. Now, I still prefer the Sensil touchpad a little bit more than this one, although this should not be a deal breaker for you. If you want to get the 15 inch, especially with the extra screen real estate, the bigger battery, uh, that should not dissuade you because this doesn't have a Sensil haptic touchpad. This has worked out very well. No issues with that. Just as, This is a little bit better in that regard. All right, let's talk display here. So this is a 15.3 inch display. We saw the same type of display, although non-OLED, in the Yoga 7i or edition 
running also Lunar Lake. We looked at a few months back. Now, 15.3 inches. This is OLED or OLED. The deep blacks, the super vibrant colors, the really high contrast. It's all there. Uh, pretty thin bezels here. Of course, you have that reverse notch. And it's multi-touch in terms of the display, pinch to zoom. All that worked really well. One thing to note, unlike the 14-inch, which has pen support, by the way, this doesn't. Not a huge deal because this is a clamshell. It's not a convertible. But that's an interesting dichotomy between the two. This does not have it, despite the fact that it is a touchscreen display. Now, as far as the brightness here, so you're looking at about 500 nits plus on this, and it can peak as bright as 1100 nits in HDR from what I understand. I still have to do some more testing, but this is a very bright display. It's also a very sharp display. Now, it is a glossy display. They do put an anti-reflective, anti-smudge coating on it, and for the most part, it worked okay, but I would like to see a matte option, kind of like we saw with the nano texture display on the MacBook Pro 14 that I have. But this is pretty good in terms of this display. Again, minimal screen wobble. All right, let's get into performance here. And this is the Core Ultra 5 228V, eight cores, eight threads, no hyper threading. That's been the theme with Lunar Lake. So if single core is very good, multi-core is going to be fine. Again, for everyday tasks, you'll be fine. You will not notice any slowdowns, any hiccups. Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, all worked well. Watching movies even doing some 1080p video editing, light 4K video editing, because this has the Intel Arc 130V graphics. And if you go with the Core Ultra 7, you can step it up to the 140V for a little bit more horsepower in terms of graphics. But as far as the 130V, that has been working out very well. I think Intel's done an excellent job with the Intel Arc graphics in general here for 2025. There is no doubt about it. So if you want to play some games on your downtime, this certainly can do the job if you lower some of the settings just kind of play with it a little bit to get to the right settings and you will be fine remember this does have two thunderbolt 4 ports so if you want to add an external gpu you have that option now as far as the thermals on this uh it stayed very quiet it also stayed very cool under heavy load and i noticed no thermal throttling for the most part when put under heavy load so they did a good job in terms of the cooling but let's get to the other star of the show here, and that would be the battery. So unlike the 14-inch, so this is a 55-watt-hour battery. This one is an 80-watt-hour battery. So it's a pretty big difference in battery, and we're seeing a big difference, as you see now on your screen, as far as the difference in battery life between the two. I ran the Modern Office test. I ran the video playback test, and you can see much better than the 14-inch, which did very well in its own right, considering how it has a high-res display, 2.8K OLED, as well as high refresh rate, 120 yards. So that has been pretty good. And not only are we seeing a really big difference in the battery life, of course, but we also have different options when it comes to the charger. So these can be outfitted with a very, very compact 65 watt nano GAN charger. And I bought one when I ordered this one. Again, Lenovo did not send me this particular unit. They did send me one of these. I also bought my own personal unit on one of these as well. But I also ordered this with the 65 watt nano GAN charger. It's the size of a smartphone plug, basically, smartphone charger. And it charges pretty fast rapid charge. Uh, what I like about it is it doesn't take up a lot of space, it weighs very little, and it's a great for your travel package all in. Now size-wise and weight-wise, uh, obviously this is going to be heavier than this one, but for a 15.3 inch laptop, I think it's a really good travel package, especially if you go with that 65 watt nano GAN charger. But if you go with the standard 65 watt charger, you'll still be perfectly fine. Not that much extra weight over that nano GAN charger. Here we go. This one is, of course, the 15-inch, the 14-inch. This says quad speakers. This says dual speakers. Let's do this. Fourteen inch. Couple of 
things before we get to the final conclusion here. I think, A, I love it, number one. This has been great. The biggest surprise to me was the such a big difference in battery life, but I guess it shouldn't be a big surprise considering the 80 watt hours versus the 55 watt hours. But besides that, I wasn't sure if I was gonna like the uh, haptic touchpad on this one since it wasn't Sensel, but that wasn't the case. I actually liked it quite a bit. Uh, Price-wise, this starts at around $1,350. This one starts at around $1,240, $1,250, and goes up from there. And considering how high the prices are, have been, for especially for business-focused laptops, uh, this is certainly not that bad. It's giving you a pretty good bang for the buck. Of course, as you add more RAM storage, other options here, you're going to raise the price. But for what we're seeing here in 2025, this is certainly very competitive and a lot less than I thought it would come in at. Now, the other elephant or pink elephant in the room or whatever the saying is, um, it's called the ThinkPad, right? So I know a lot of the traditionalists are saying, this is not a ThinkPad. This is more of a ThinkBook. Why did they call it a ThinkPad? Well, from what I understand, you know, obviously Lenovo and their ThinkPad line own a third or 33% of the market for business laptops. They want the other two thirds, right? So they're trying to expand their reach. So they tried something different here. They tried to make it appeal to a larger audience. And I think for the most part, they achieved that. There's no track point. Obviously, some people are upset about that. It doesn't come in the black. It has this thunder gray finish. It has the haptic touchpad, and it doesn't have quite as many ports, but it is very thin, and it is very, very light, and it is a very modern-looking design, and I like the way this looks. I'm a big fan of this design. That being said, should they have called it something else? You know, that's a debate we can make, we can have from here till tomorrow. The bottom line is, is the question is, is whether is it a good laptop? And the answer is an unquestionable, yeah, undoubtedly, yes, this is a great laptop, and I highly recommend it here for 2025. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. I think Lenovo here did a fantastic job creating something new. Doesn't mean they're getting rid of the track point on the other, you know, the X1 Carbon, the T-Series, all that. It's not going anywhere. But the fact that they're trying something different, something bold in a lot of ways, and something a little bit radical from the traditional design, I got to give them credit. It. Again, let me know what you think in the comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. And if you're watching my content and you're not subscribed, why not hit that subscribe button? It doesn't cost anything. And we're also making our push here for 250,000. I wanna get there by the end of the year. I don't know if we'll make it, but we are growing at a rapid pace. So I do appreciate the support nonetheless. And of course, as always, if you're gonna buy these, why not go through the links in the description below? They are affiliate links. That certainly gives me a small commission when you do buy, and it certainly helps support the channel, and I do appreciate it. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.